Hello all and welcome to the Hive series on PCB design with KiCad. My name is Ben and in this series we've been walking through the PCB design process using KiCad as our electronics design software. Videos one, or really zero, but one through five C went through the design process all the way through from conceptualization and parts selection all the way through till um, uh, layout and Gerber generation, making a PCB ready for fabrication. Um, in uh, videos 6 and 7a, 7b, and 7c, we've been talking about library management and how to create a project-specific library um, for your designs. This is highly advantageous and preferred when using KiCad to insulate your designs and your footprints and your models from external changes that might happen if you upgrade your software or something like that. Um, I didn't do that in the regular design, in the first design flow, just due to simplicity and time constraints. Part six went through a project specific symbol library and in part seven and A we developed, we made the custom uh, library and then added a custom footprint using the blank slate method and discovered how difficult and annoying that was and just imported the battery symbol directly. In this video, we're going to using the wizard. I'm going to show you the wizard to make a footprint for our IC and then decide never to repeat it again, if at all possible. This material is of course not required for functional design, but it is good, good design practice for KiCad at least, such that all of your parts are in a project specific library that is separated from the built-in stuff that is upgradable with KiCad itself. Um, and because this design, this is not directly related to the design flow of a lot of the previous videos, I'm going to make no assumptions about the state of your system or knowledge other than the fact that you've watched, hopefully, part 7a. Um, so I apologize if some of this is rep repetition for some of you. But without further ado, let's get started. So as a review, this is where we left the last video with seven of the eight required footprints in our project specific library. Obviously this battery holder was downloaded, not made by me. So if you saved a, your personal copy rather than the one you downloaded, first kudos to you, but also second, it'll obviously look different unless you spend a, a, your precious time making this, in which case your employer will not be happy, but I digress. So finally on to the IC. ICs can either, are usually either in a standard package with a known footprint or based off of a standard package. But you always need to confirm the standard, the, sorry, the supplier provided package with the data sheet. It's really important to do this. You're going to be really sad later if you assume it's a standard package and it's not. KiCad has a large selection of standard footprints that should work. So the first place to check for a footprint is actually in KiCad itself with the filter box in the footprint editor. Filter for the part number and the package number, package name. If you filtered for TSOT-23-6, congratulations, you found the part. You could copy this into the library and be done, after confirming the sizing and spacing, of course. But that would sort of defeat the purpose of this video. If we didn't find the correct package, or you found one that might have been correct but wasn't quite correct, um, we would next search online, either from your supplier, the manufacturer, ultra librarian, or Snapmagic, or whatever preferred service you use. Then it could be imported like we demonstrated with the battery holder by right clicking on the library and going to input, import footprint. If not, we can just request and wait and then import it later once they've made it. The last recourse is to make it as we saw uh, with the battery holder. But of course, because this is a tutorial about KiCad, we're going to do that. So recall that there are actually two options for making footprints in KiCad. Um, the one on the left is the completely from scratch blank piece of paper. It's good for distinctly non-standard components like battery holders. The one on the right is the wizard. It's much better assuming your footprint is standard or nearly standard. In this case, since our IC is theoretically a standard or nearly a standard, we're gonna open the wizard. So this gives you a bunch of different wizards. So you want to select the wizard that is not the footprint, the wizard that is closest to what you need. The IC is a TSOT-23-6. That is the six pin variant of the TSOT-23 package, which is the thin variant of an SOT-23 package. You might scroll and realize, hey Ben, there's no one, there's no wizard for the SOT. And I'll say, well, there certainly isn't one called SOT. And you'll look at me funny. And I'll tell you that SOT is a subset of the SO class packages, small outline, which are defined by rectangular bodies and external legs. And you'll continue to look at me funny 
And I'll tell you to select the SOIC generator, which is number 11, because SOIC stands for Small Outline Integrated Circuit, and that's the overarching family that includes the SOT type, among many others. As an aside, package nomenclature is awful. Um, it's something you'll just get familiar with in uh, with design. There are just so many standards and so many variations, different like small variations between them. It's not clear. It can be very painful. The data sheets man, uh, mechanical drawings are really the one and only truth for the specific parts package size. So use a lot of caution when uh, assuming that your part is a standard package. Um, the best option is almost always to ask um, to get your parts, uh, your part models generated by one of these services and have them sent to you. That way you can, you're pretty confident in the fact that you've got the right thing rather than assuming that it's a general component. One thing you can do is place the general component, like the, the, the built-in kind of global component first, and then once you get the correct part in, swap it out. Shouldn't be a too much of a change at that point if you're using something, you know, typical. Anyway, we're gonna need a bunch of parameters here to generate our footprint. So we gotta go to the data sheet first. You might notice some physical similarities, uh, which tells us that we're probably using the right wizard. And by physical similarities, I mean that there are legs and it's a rectangular outline. And that's kind of what our data sheet looks like. So now we can fill out our parameters. Again, we have, it's super useful to have a second monitor here. Um, so what are all of these parameters anyway? We've got package height, seating plane height, body width, leg pin width, package width, package length, pin pitch, pin thickness, and pin length. It's a whole lot. Not all data sheets will follow this naming, this naming schema either. A few of the requested parameters are readily available. So uh, in the footprint wizard, it asks for pad count, which is six. Row count, we've got two rows. Pad pitch, which is E, the E um, value. And then we've got pad width, which is the little B. But there are a few tricky bits. Uh, should we be using min, max, or something else? What should the pad length be, given that there's so much variability here? Uh, what is row spacing measured from? The middle of the pad length, the pad length, the edge, one of the edges. How much bigger should the pads be than the legs themselves? The part needs to fit in the worst case scenario. So this is a mock-up of what the footprint parameter, parameters are. The row spacing is actually measured center to center, although at least in this wizard. Um, but the pad interior edge to edge is smaller than the minimum body width and the maximum package length is shorter than the pad exterior edge to edge. Still doesn't really answer the key question of what the pad length should be though. Some data sheets are better about giving useful dimensions or even better, a recommended footprint like the battery holder did. Standard packages that are not in KiCad still have a standard footprint that you can search for and use. Totally legitimate. Otherwise, you're really just going to have to make your best judgment here. You might be getting a sense for why companies should do this for you right now. Given all of this, we're not actually going to make this part. It's really just not worth the time to like figure all this out. Otherwise, I'm just giving you numbers, which isn't the point. So I'll just end this wizard portion by pointing out two things. The first is that there's a body tab here with some additional settings that are useful visually if you care. And the second is that this icon here, once you've finished in the wizard, will actually send your footprint to the footprint editor for saving. Don't forget to use the measure tool to confirm your sizes and spacings after sending it to the editor. That's going to definitely be your best bet to make sure that your part is going to fit without actually just printing it one to one. Okay, so now we know multiple methods to make a footprint. We can make it from scratch or through the wizard. We can request or locate it, Ultra Librarian Snapmagic Manufacturer Supplier, and then import it, or we can use the built in version if available. The last method I'm going to show you as an option is the Snapmagic InstaBuild Footprint Generator. There are probably other footprint generators online as well. I'm just not familiar with them. I don't use, haven't used them before. So from the Snapmagic homepage, there is actually an InstaBuilder dropdown. Select with ev whichever family you're using. Um, we're going to be using the SOP calculator because SOIC actually fixes the pin pitch at 1.27 millimeters, which isn't right. So the SOP is very similar, but it allows that variable pin pitch. Looks like this. Each of these calculators is very similar conceptually to the KiCad wizards. It gives you this thing and you fill in a bunch of different numbers. 
The datasheet pane is a nice touch to avoid having to use a second monitor. I've uploaded the datasheet and moved down to page 14, which gives me all these values. And I've filled some of the values on the right here as well. The pin pitch is actually an average from the drawing, which I think is probably safe. Um, the footprint name is auto-generated, uh, and the min pad to pad is preset. I actually have no idea what that means, frankly, but I, well, I know what it means. It means how much, what's the minimum spacing pad to pad before things complain, but that one's preset. I just leave it as the default. So scrolling down a little bit on the right hand side, uh, there's a table that we can also fill out to uh, direct, basically directly from the mechanical drawing in the data sheet. Um, that will reduce the amount of guessing and math that you have to do and also adds a lot more flexibility over the KiCad wizards, which um, just ask you for, you know, six different parameters that you may or may not have. However, you do have to be careful because the letter identifiers may not match by default. For instance, C is the pat is the um, the package width in the drawing and in the generator, the footprint generator, it's actually big E. So a little bit different there. Just be careful. Uh, once you've successfully filled out the table and all of its required little boxes and it fills itself out for you, the generate footprint button will appear down below. Um, do this to the best of your ability. It's not always going to be perfect. That's uh, again, another reason to get someone else to do it for you. The generation will take a few seconds, but once it's done, you can go ahead and download away. Uh, it'll warn you that it hasn't gotten a chance to verify the footprint yet, which is totally fair. Um, I'm not actually clear if this footprint goes on their queue to be verified though. Frankly, this whole footprint generator thing is really just a, a placeholder, a temporary placeholder. You should really be requesting the footprint part directly from them, and then you can go and generate the footprint here. And then once they've actually created the quote, correct footprint, you would then just like swap that in basically. This will get close enough that it'll be good enough uh, for at least temporarily, but maybe not for production quality. So yeah, and once you've uh, downloaded it and then imported it back into KiCad, you'll see this is what it looks like. Uh, the pink is the mask layer. You can kind of see it around the red pads. Um, that's the mask layer, solder mask layer, which will define where the solder mask openings are on the board. Other parts also have those polygons, but they're just usually the same size as the copper pad, which um, then the copper pad takes visual priority. So uh, you don't see them typically. Um, and this, the bottom one is what the original KiCad part was like. So uh, one thing you might immediately notice is that the uh, Snapmagic pads are significantly thicker. Uh, so that means the pad, the spacing between them is substantially smaller. That may or may not be okay for your fab house. You'll really have to double check with their uh, fabrication requirements based on to know if that gap is going to be acceptable or not. Um, and I think that's the minimum pad to pad spacing that we were talking about before. Um, you can see a little bit that they're, again, they're close, but not really quite the same. Would the, would one of them work and one of them not work? You'd really have to put them on a board and print a one-to-one -one copy to actually find out. Hopefully the differences are small enough that it wouldn't matter and that, yeah, both of them would work. Um, the real thing is that pad spacing that we'd be concerned about. Either way, this is really a great example of kind of how error prone and variable this footprint generation process can be. Even between very, given the variation between data sheets, it's really critical to confirm your parts fit before sending your designs off for fab. And that almost always means printing out a one-to-one -one scale copy and physically placing your components on top of your board to make sure that everything work, everything is, you know, hunky-dory, so to speak. And with that, we conclude part 7C. And as of spring 2024, the end of the PCB design with KiCad tutorial series. If you have further design questions and you're on the Georgia Tech campus, free, feel free to stop by the Hive during open hours, normally during the semester 11 to 6. There's usually a PI, MPI, or staff member available to help you, even if they don't know KiCad specifically, because design questions transcend software choices. If you're not on campus, the internet is your friend here. For KiCad specific questions, there are probably hundreds of tutorials on KiCad, especially on the basics that we've covered in this series. And the forums are quite active with documentation being pretty good, although not complete. For design specific questions, you'll probably be doing a lot of trial and error, frankly, although you can definitely read up on, you know, lots of different ways to do pretty much everything. Um, make some demo boards to test out the concepts you're working on, read a lot and decide how much error is really tolerable to your system. 
design is really just a never-ending topic, so there's always more to learn. So thanks so much for watching, and good luck with your design choices.